back at still the breakfast on plus tv africa and time profess conversation well the social economic rights and accountability project in nigeria and based civil society organization also known as serap has sued the nigerian president muhammad buhari over the agreement the country reached with the united states of america for the repatriation of funds stolen by uh, the late military dictator sunny abacha worth about 23 million now, the agreement signed in August 2022 followed the $311 million of Bacha loot returned by America in 2020. Sarap in the suit filed at the Federal High Court in Abuja is asking uh, the court to direct the President, Muhammad Buhari, and the Attorney General, uh, Malami Abubakar, to make the details of this uh, uh, transactional agreement rather public. Uh, the body also wants to know the mechanisms uh, put in place to ensure uh, that the repatriated funds are not mismanaged, diverted, or restolen. Now, in filing the suit, Serap is relying on the Nigerian Constitution, the Freedom of Information Act, and the country's international obligations. And uh, we'll look at the reasoning behind this move by Serap as well as its import as we welcome our guests on the program uh, this morning. We have joining us uh soji organeri Bore. he is um management consultant and social commentator glad to have you uh soji we have also dr abubakar salihu who is a political scientist a public policy analyst and a lecturer at the Bayero university in Kano. gentlemen thank you very much for your time this morning thank you thank you morning sir. Yeah. Right. Now, is there a need, in your opinion, uh, for the, uh, the, the, the federal government to do what Serap is asking it to do, especially bearing in mind the fact that uh, this is a, a bilateral agreement between the United States and Nigeria, and also bearing in mind that the federal government had previously said that these loots will be channeled into infrastructure projects uh, by the federal government. I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Salihu. Yeah, Dr. Sally, are you there, please? Can you hear me? Okay. Whilst, while, whilst we cannot hear uh, uh, Sally, let's go over to uh, Soji Ogene Rieborie. Uh, Soji, can you hear me, please? I can. Um, yeah. So, so just, I am not G, anyway. Um, I think it's uh, appropriate. I'm fine. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, loud and clear. Please go on. Are we there? And thanks to Sarah for the onerous task of what they have been doing uh, in calling the government out and asking for accountability. These uh, from the being returned or recovered were born out of corruption, as it were. And it is that a government that has been done in the dark of anti corruption, even where we have been to the country, that when these funds are returned, they should be properly accounted for. And for whatever, for whenever they are invested, it should be made to the public. But in any case, the federal government, I have don't have. The to so it would expend any funds except they are appropriated by the National Assembly. So uh, this, with these two points, it, it behoves on the government to only come out open with this uh, recovered funds. Uh, it's also saying that the National Assembly is not in any way aware of this. And the, if this, if this Funds are not fully accounted for, and they are invested in. I don't know note that, that they are also keeping something under the rack or hiding a something, which we could be said that the money that is reduced to corruption. And thanks to Senator for taking up the federal government of course to ask for explanation. I think uh, I'm in time. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
Yes, we can. Um, um, so, so you, this, it points that that I knew, I knew that to have been looted by this government debt for the price is rate of five billion US dollars. And since then, in 24 years, when we went into the crazy, yes. uh, over three billion has been uh, recovered or returned. However, we have not been told how these returned much over three billion dollars have been invested and what uh, have been spent. Moreover, National Assembly has never prepared such funds, so it is said they have been illegally been persuaded perpetrated by the federal government. We, in this case, there seems to have been an agreement that has been signed by the United uh, States of America and the Nigerian government in return for this one. Because the last time that was returned in 2020, I think, or 21, they have, before this one was returned, there was an agreement in 2021 that this one should go for certain purposes. I'm not sure the U.S. government wants to return funds and put them into corruption or be related. So, say asking the French government, let us see that document. It's a bilateral document. It's not a subsequent document. That we should see what how what is contained in that document. Not a show malami. The chief law officer coming to say, "Well, oh, we have agreed to spend the money in this place." I don't know if it's entitled or if he, if he has a, the authority to, to, to appropriate such funds into such sectors, even if it's for development of infrastructure. So right. Let us see that. And I don't know why it is not possible for us to see that. Yeah. And the law, the constitution of the Federal, of the Federal Republic, maintains it's not amended, says in section 80 that the federal government cannot extend any funds except it's appropriated by the National Assembly. So whatever they are doing is illegally. So asking them to not come from K and let them see this written document, not not over the three billion that we found that we cannot explain. So we hear this come to say, oh, the three ninety four billion return the last time it was spent to feed one two for two million Nigeria. So this comes up with for this. It's uh, it begs the question that this government is uh, not transparent their dealings, in particular with these return funds of Abacha that was looted. Well, but, but let's look at the fact that, you know, the specific conditions of how the recovered loot will be spent, and it was attached uh, to the repatriation. Now, do you think that the government, that's the government, they have stated that they will use this funds for, you know, capital project. Uh, do you think that it will actually be what the government has said? I would not think so, just as they have also said in the past that money the previous funds returned were given to a state work for the area or were used for project. We can't see that. There is no documentation to this effect, no information to say that what they say is actually what it is. So these are led the government with integrity uh, uh, issues. There's, they, they are now, they are wrong of the integrity that we just speak. Uh, uh, proof here that people will do with it, and they expect Nigerians to go to sleep with it. But it's obvious that this is not going to be the case. And in particular, the the the, the, the second Niger bridge that they said they're going to spend the money on, it's not correct. But from record, second Niger bridge is a PPP project. The federal government has only paid their contributions, and the people that are building it are going to collect their money back through all through all the bridge. So which we are going to spend that money. That's why they have to complain and be specific on how the point is good. They have they have they have run short of integrity on this matter, and I'm happy that Sarah is pulling them out today. All right. Uh, um. Um. It, it, it was a, a PPP project at some point, but um. Since this administration came in, uh, if you look at the history of the Second Niger Bridge from the days of. Uh, uh, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, if I go before Olusegun Obasanjo into the military times, but we look at from this current republic, uh, Olusegun Obasanjo's time, 
when he hurriedly before, some days before he left office, uh, went to site and flagged off. And then Yardra came in, couldn't complete it. Jonathan went there, made promises, and then, of course, they had a PPP arrangement. But it seems like since uh, Buhari came on board, um, it's been more of the federal government saying we're going to fund this project uh, and the cost going up. I mean, uh, hearing this year Zainab Ahmed, the Minister of Finance, and, uh, uh, financing about 157 billion naira being spent on that, uh, that the initial cost had to be revealed up to about 400 billion naira because of rising inflation. So uh, we might have to check. Maybe they, they still have, have spending money on the second Niger Bridge. They're also talking about, like you said earlier, the, um, the Lagos Ibano Expressway, the Abuja uh, uh, oh. Kanu, yes, road. You have Lagos Shagamu uh, Ibado Expressway, Abuja Kaduna Zaria Expressway, etc. Now, there's something called the Presidential uh, Infrastructure Development Fund, uh, which you know helps provide a lot of these projects. So everything that will be spent to pay contractors from the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund uh, from anywhere, sorry, will be channeled through the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. And I do remember, no. yes, yes, I do remember a spokesman one of the media aides uh, uh, in the office of the President, Nigerian Gelale, saying the structure of the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund means that nobody can steal even one dollar out of it, you know, the, the structure put in place. So isn't that enough to give some sort of transparency that Serap is looking for um, to not warrant going to court? Yeah, no. If the, before Sarah went to court, Sarah has, Sarah has applied to them for this information. And because they are not coming out of it uh, voluntarily, they have to go to court to also invoke a FOI uh, law and get the court to come uh, train, to bring uh, to compel them to bring out this information. So if they, if they, if, if truly they feel the, that committee is transparent, then such information will not be hidden from Sarah. Because Sarah, they, 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 they know that they have probably skeletons in their cover to hide with that. And, they say, and, and you know, with this government transparency, if they, uh, if they are shocked on that, except uh, where it is, they are probably called out. So we're hoping that uh, their continuation in their illegality and illegitimate way of doing things will not, they don't even uh, respect the court orders. But that this approach to court owner is also getting them to work behind to, to, to do this purpose, even if they are intended not to even spend money in the areas that they have uh, 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 listed. But with this uh, uh, case, they will now be put. Uh, on the line that if people who don't spend the whole money on this area, let's put something on ground that will be seen to, that will be seen to have been come out from this uh, money. So I think uh, it, it will come with me in whatever form Sarah is right to have gone to court. They are, they are they have the local standing to do that, and uh, it is interesting that somebody like them they are there to speak on behalf of the people to so, to get more this information. If they don't even get government for it, they are considered in, in facilitating and making the people to sit right uh, uh, to an extent that the money will be put in those areas that they have uh, listed. So I think that in whatever that, it, 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 so constitutionally, like I said, even the money is not supposed to be approved by, uh, by the government, even if they have a committee. It's an income to the state, to the federal government, to the country. Because there's money that has left before illegal, I mean, it's time to be appropriated. We can see those lines of other previously return notes in, a, in the budget, the plan budget. So there is something about the loot and how it, obviously one cannot, one can only be left because that the money that they looted, except mm -hmm. the concrete evidence to show that the money went to certain areas. That's my thing. So, so how do we achieve all of the things that you have said? Because, I mean, these are the concerns that uh, Nigerians have actually raised. Uh, the big notion with all of the uh, looted funds is that these funds will be relooted. And over time, Serap is here suing the government because uh, when we talk about transparency, the process has not been respected. 
So over time, we hear government saying, we will embark on capital projects. We will, I mean, at some point, there was a, a particular trench of the fund that was shared among 1.9 million poor Nigerians, vulnerable Nigerians, if you like to say. And so um, how do we get to a point as a country where we have a structure or a system that can ensure that funds that are looted are not re-looted? Yes, that's the point that will continue to raise our voice on these matters. Bring it to the front burner. Even if the government is not to such a third party, such a court, uh, uh, because they seem, to, they seem to be really full with the gap of impunity that they don't care what people say. Because probably this, this election here, I'm sure they, they have. The, the, the election years and web funds are also uh, uh, appropriated for things that are not tangible, and all is explained in, uh, in, the, in the line of the campaign funds. We know we had of $2.1 billion in the past, so the government, will, we should not start to ask questions, because the more we ask questions, no matter how we are in a way trying to put them in check, but for record, do that we ask questions and go to court to see if they can be compared. If the government that has respect for rule of law, they wouldn't even wait for this. Mm. All right. Uh, um, uh, so, Jay, in, in um, 2020, this is about two years ago, uh, Sarah, they've been on this, uh, on this matter for some time, and they had yeah. uh, uh, communication with the uh, Minister of, uh, uh, of Justice and Attorney General, Avoka Malami, who is listed as a respondent, a respondent in this suit that was filed on Friday. And he yeah. responded to Serap, interestingly, he responded to Serap, saying that uh, the federal government had no record of um, the exact amount of public funds stolen by the former military head of state, Sani Abacha, but more importantly, that the federal government had no records of the spending of about five billion U.S. dollars uh, recovered loot for the period between 1999 and 2015. That's that's uh, amazing, isn't it? Uh, um, quite worrying, you know. What what are, what are your thoughts on that? Um, when you when somebody you don't expect to get something from somebody that doesn't have it. The, this government, the government that that uh, that, that uh, that, that I do, I throw in red area. If, if there is so much loud voice and noise asking for such uh, information, they come up to just put a word in the, a, 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 a word in the space and say, this is what we, we are not aware. So in, in that, it rather, rather be responsible as a government to inform their citizens of what is going on, they make you to go dig and dig. They were, at every point you are able to call them out and say, oh, we have found this. They give you a response to that to that limit. So I I don't know if I can really believe what comes from this uh, government at this point because we had enough evidence and reason to to, to see that they are they are, they are very short on transparency and accountability. And that if you ask me, corruption if corruption has has so exponentially increased from what we thought. That we were coming to fight, and how do we compare those two ends? Becomes an spectacle to feel that these people that have been this uh, 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 corrupt become out something good at the end of the day, as it were. We are at the twilight of their government and their tenor, and it couldn't be any better than where they have been along. All right. Uh, Let, uh, let's. Uh, yeah. We're being told that we have Dr. Abubakar now. Uh, Abubakar, thank you for joining us once again. Thank Abu you for having me this morning. All right, then. Unfortunately, I mean, we have uh, missed you on the conversation, but quickly, what are your thoughts? Sarap has always been uh, at the front front. I mean, you want to talk about the front burner of uh, suing and litigation, suing the government, Buhari over some actions. Do you think that's really any um, positive outcome for this particular one? Because it wouldn't be the first time. We're still saying one and the same thing. Transparency is a big issue. We can't really say that the funds that have been looted have been used for the exact purpose that they were meant for or have been stated that would be used for. So 
do you think that this makes any sense or does any meaning to it impact, if you like to say? All right. Uh, good morning, uh, viewers out there. Uh, actually, I must uh, start by commending the effort uh, of the federal uh, government by even repatriating, you know, putting energy and its uh, effort in repatriation of some of the huge uh, money stolen by the past uh, military uh, leader. So it's laudable. Full uh, is commendable and is Arab has every right, you know, to actually serve as instrument or a watchdog to the business of governance in Nigeria. Because this is civil society organization that uh, adheres to uh, accountability, uh, management, and human rights. You know, uh, since 1999, uh, so many money was uh, recovered or repatriated from uh, the Abacha uh, loot uh, to the tune of uh, it was estimated to be five billion US. There's no any publication. The government has failed to publish it before the uh, public domain on what exactly has been. Uh, repatriated and how and we need to know all this and that is what has all right, we seem to has have informed a... the action uh, taken and the attorney general accessibility to information is one of the vital right of every citizen and this is one good aspect of uh, democratic value in any society uh, citizens must be vigilant uh, citizens must checkmate what is happening the daily business of government must be known by the citizen so uh, so many money was to be recovered but no accountability. This has led to a kind of uh, mistrust, a kind of uh, people not having confidence in what government uh, is doing as regards to repatriated uh, amount of money that is said to be. Well, uh, uh, 23 million US, uh, no, like, uh, lack of so many peculiarities that we you know that are attributed to third world countries, you know, make people not to have confidence in how government are spending uh, this much. Yes, it was agreement between uh, Nigerian government and United States of America. The agreement was uh, actually read on how to carry it out some, even say that they will not repatriate this money. All right, so before, before we go, we seem to be having a bit of a network challenge with you there. Uh, but I, I'll come back to Sajay um, while we, we hope, hopefully, we, we get it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Doc, are you there, sir? Can you hear me, Doc? All right, it seems you can't hear me. Um, but I, I'll come back to Sajay before we go. Because um, uh, it seems Doc has a bit of a network connection. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, is there anything that can come out of this case that will prevent, uh, Sajay, any mismanagement of these funds? Because, I mean, the agreement between the country uh, and, and the United States of America uh, is a sort of collaboration, you know, in order to use the money to do the right things. It was said, you know, by the United States ambassador to Nigeria that um, this latest repatriation brings the total amount to 334.7 million, you know, and that um, she actually said this, these are her words. As a result of the agreement, 23 million will be transferred to the Nigerian government, which through the Nigerian Sovereign, Insur um, Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority will be used to continue infrastructure projects, three key infrastructure projects located in strategic economic zones of the country and all. So they've said this exactly. Is there, is there anything that will come out 
of, of any sort of information made available to Serap to say, okay, we're, go we're using this money, this is how much was sent to contractor A, contractor B, con that would still give Serap anything to, to, to prevent, to say, oh, nothing will be stolen because, I mean, if they say, oh, we are appropriating it to contractors, what guarantee is there that if that information is made available, that funds will still uh, not find its way to, to pockets of these government officials? Uh, I can come in, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now, uh, thank you very much. Even the, the fact that we are probably helpless as Nigeria, getting at we are not hopeless. And uh, this is coming out of the government in, 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 in a way of the order will increase the, 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 the will reduce the propensity to want to appropriate the funds because people are aware. You only inspect what you expect. If we know what is contained in that document and it's a project for, for uh, infrastructure, let us even know if it's the one that I've mentioned, that I've mentioned by Malami, uh, the, uh, the the military, the military for uh, justice. So, like I will continue to say, we're going to live on a hope that as, we, as much as they are, they are known to us, and that we are calling them, we are aware to an extent, we are in a way facilitating the fact that uh, the, their misappropriation tendencies will be reduced. But to me, that will be a loss. So even if they are planned to really put those bodies in the areas that have been mentioned, and those are not the areas that were mentioned in the in the agreement that is being kept secret, uh, they will have the thing and try and put it in the All right. All we right. cannot count the work of setup or the other civil uh, uh, organizations that are that are that are speaking on behalf of the people. To ask the government questions. Because it's obvious, it seems to, to the fact that government has been able to either uh, judge group from speaking, but if these people are speaking for us, we we'll continue to uh, support them and, uh, uh, and, and thank them not for, for what they are doing. All right. No matter All right. the outcome, if, even, if it is not what we are expecting, we are going to get gradually to that point where corruption will be reduced. On this particular matter, All right. in this specific issue, that's right. my thing. So you're saying you're saying it's not a lost cause. Something will good will still come out from this. Uh, All right. uh, so Jay Ogenere Bori, right. we want to thank you so much for your time as a management consultant and social commentator. Uh, Dr. Abubak Abubakar Salihu, uh, we're also sorry for the network interruptions. Uh, apologies for that. I'm sure. We'll have it better next time. He's a political scientist, public policy analyst, and lecturer at Bayer University County. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that's uh, the size of it this morning. We'll take a break and quickly we'll run through our second conversation. Please stay with us.